coming to you from the world of AV control, programming, and automation. With James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. Hey, James, I'm glad we're back for another another episode. I'm um, always be glad to connect with you, Steve. It's uh, been a fun project, as we've been saying, and we're we're getting to know each other better, and we're also getting to explore several different ways to answer people's questions in the industry. And we, we received a little bit of feedback uh, recently, and we want to make sure that we recognize that. Oh, definitely. So uh, uh, thank you to Aaron from uh, John Hopkins University. Uh, she reached out and made a comment on YouTube about one of our videos. And again, thank you, Aaron, for listening. I, I know Aaron from my Slack group, as well as he is a formal, uh, not she is a HEPMA board member alongside with myself. So we uh, connect uh, frequently. So uh, it's great that she's listening and uh, commenting. I'm hopefully learning. I certainly appreciate that as well. And uh, the best thing you can do for us is to let other people know that you found us and share what, what you like and leave us some comments. So today we're going to explore a question that's been something that has I've fielded for probably since the beginning of my career. So I uh, believe it or not, I started doing uh, control programming in the '90s, and it, <laughs> at the time there were two two prominent leaders in the industry that were neck and neck in uh, doing uh, providing control systems, and really that's all they provided. And you guys know who they are. Um, and I would all the time get asked which one's better. And being that I have an independent programming company that supports both, it's like asking which of your kids you like more. You know, <laughs> you, you really have to be very careful and it's not a, not a fair question. But what I, the answer that I always share is uh, it depends. You know, it de depends on a lot of different things. It depends on what you're trying to do um, and what you're comfortable with and also the what you know better and what you do more often you know those were a lot of the ways that I would handle that question uh, but but there are definitely distinct ways to approach uh, control platforms and one of the differences is the programming language and you know, James, I know you, you're you very comfortable uh, doing one of the platforms and, and because of the environment that you're in and, you know, that, that's what you're exposed to most often. Um, what would you recommend to somebody and, and how, how would you answer that question? Would it be different than, than what I just said? Um, no, I don't think it would be different because uh, I think you hit it, the nail on the head of what you are comfortable in um now years ago i was actually um, on a job interview and when they questioned my av programming skills they saw what platform i knew it wasn't the platform they use but they're like you should have no problem switching over because the one i was i'm on is they claim was a more skilled um, than what they use. But I do know from working in higher ed, and I kind of hinted this into on my April article for the higher ed AV digital magazine is that's one limitation of in-house programmer. Like the university, when I got brought in and did the AV programming, I was told what language we were using. I didn't get to choose. Um, now I do enjoy it. I do think it's a good language. Um, but then it's, I also know like someone like me, yes, I can adapt with my programming background, but someone who may not have that skills, they may be pigeon toed into that language. And now that university is pigeon toed into that equipment and they can't branch out because they can't support the different languages. So I agree, it's what you can use and what you are comfortable with, but also you gotta be adaptable and be able, willing to learn new things. 
I, I would agree too that it's often uh, not often the case that a, uh, a, a, a end user or organization is going to be changing things up. Usually they go down one road and they kind of stick with it because there's advantages to that. And, and um, there really aren't enough shortcomings to make a change. And one of the things that I actually uh, I, I struggle with is when I see a client being sold on the fact that let's try change from one brand to another because that's going to make the system work better where it likely is that either the, the equipment wasn't installed properly or it wasn't programmed right. Uh, that's usually the, the two, two biggest variables. It's, it's not that one of the control platforms works particularly better than the others. I, I think, yes, you're correct. Um, the platforms all work they all have their pros and their cons. Um, I know in higher ed, though, what more I would be looking for is not always the case of being moving to a platform just because it's claimed to be more reliable, but more of we always look in the best value for our students and for the learning environment. So the platform we're on could you know like i kind of summed this up with my brother years ago he was looking at car insurance never had an accident never had a ticket on his uh record at all but his rate kept going up and he finally called his insurance company he's like why is my rate going up i have no accidents i have no tickets safe driver no claim and his agent flat out told him Every six months, you should shop around for insurance because you're going to find better rates. And that's something we kind of need to do in higher ed is maybe evaluate our equipment and not get into that notion of this is working and then stick with the rate increases over years because maybe the next manufacturer could solve us our problem, but is 10, 20 or even 50% cheaper. Um, also, you could, some of these other platforms might be more um, easy to learn for beginners where a, uh, so you can bring on a junior programmer or another person on your staff. So you're no longer a man or a person on an island. Absolutely. I think it goes back to the the conversation about programming versus configuring too, because some of the platforms do support both. Some are really invested in configuration and others are, their strength is programming. And, and it does depend, as you said, uh, in the, the, the environment that you're in and the types of systems that you do and the people that you have doing them. So, so actually it's a really interesting point because if you think about it, um, the more capable system may be lost on somebody who's doing just the, the more capable control solution may be lost on somebody who's doing smaller, more uh, simpler systems. And, yeah. and it could actually end up that you're paying for things that you don't need and where, where you can actually get by with maybe I, I don't want to, to sound in a negative, but maybe a more primitive system because you really don't need the horsepower or the capabilities or complexity of the larger system. Correct. It's uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting conversation. And I think the, you know, the other thing that we, we should just touch on, as you mentioned before, is the programming language and, and how, how it actually gets done. And, and there's certainly some people who are going to feel more comfortable in what would be considered a, a, a more fully developed programming language. And then there's others who uh, don't really need that because they are not, they don't, they either don't have a programming background or software development background, or they, they think differently. Um, there, there's certainly pros and cons to, to both of those as well. Oh yeah. So, I mean, again, there's pros and cons to everything. It's, what you're the most comfortable in and what is actually delivering for your end users. I mean, what that would come down to, 
Um, we, you could spend 10 hours doing custom coding for an event space, or you can do two minutes with the configuration, but the end user is not going to know the difference between a configuration and a, the custom programming. So it needs to work. That's what it really comes down to. It just needs to work. All right. I, I think that's a great place for us to wrap th up this conversation because it, it, no truer words were, have been spoken when it comes to, to, to the type of work that we do. Uh, James, how can people reach out to you and, and uh, share what they know and their favorites uh, with regard to control platforms? Uh, I definitely want to hear what other platform uh, our listeners are using. So there's a lot out there. It's great to hear what everyone's using. But uh, you can get me on Twitter, AV underscore James King, uh, LinkedIn, James King. You can also swing by higheredav.com, where I write a monthly article, the IT and AV. And for me, I could be reached simply at Steve Greenblatt on social media. Uh, but we really want to hear from you and, and it really mean a lot to us if you shared an episode or left a comment or or even recommended us to a friend. So, uh, and we're, we've been trying to mention the, those who have left comments and feedback and thank you again, Aaron, for doing so. Uh, but we, this is a, a project that we are doing to try to serve the community and try to build knowledge amongst programmers and those doing programming. So uh, please help us to, to make that a reality. Uh, uh, until next time, this has been Ask the Programmer.